Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fugit Blitz. Now, I've held a driving license since the age of 17, so for like 32 years. I actually learnt to drive in the army and I hold dual UK and German driving license because I was taught to drive in Germany. I also hold a license to drive tanks, oddly enough. But with all that experience and knowledge gained over the years of driving, the chances of me being able to just jump into a Formula One car and rolling out in a Grand Prix and actually doing well is like totally implausible. Yet we think we can do exactly that in Blitz. New players jump into the game, do the training, which whilst improved is still only teaching you the basics. And after a few games, they feel they are totally capable of jumping into a high tier tank and they'll be able to actually offer some meaningful contribution to the battle. Are you serious? I then cast my mind back to when I trained to be an army officer. Off you trot to the military academy, you learn the basics of soldiering and leading men, and after a year, assuming you pass the course, off you then trot to a real life unit. However, don't suddenly expect to be commanding anything greater than a platoon, because you literally know nothing. And in fact, one staff sergeant told me once, you are less than useless. And this remains with you until you prove yourself through your experience, because experience means a lot, even in real life. So why is it perfectly acceptable to jump into, say, a tier 10 tank in Blitz with little to no experience? Well, actually, it's not. In fact, it totally ruins the experience for all those involved. And, shocking news, it leads to toxicity. So who's to blame for this? Well, the majority of blame must obviously rest with Wargaming. And it stems from the fiasco that was update 5.5. Yep, that little gem is still having an impact. Of course. But it's not just that, it's also because they're throwing lots of stuff at new players allowing them to climb that tier ladder far quicker than previously. In AI I'm talking about the boosters, the discount certificates and such. Throw into that mix the game modes that don't impact your stats, but also give you the tools required to get the tanks quicker, think ratings, mad games, etc, etc. Then you have a recipe for disaster. But let's be fair, Wargaming aren't the only ones to blame here. Us YouTubers must also share some of the responsibility because we churn out videos that mainly concentrate on the upper tier tanks and the big damage games, which clearly attract players to want to go out and get those tanks and mirror what they see. Not only that, but most of the Y tiers, if you check, have very healthy win rates. I'm talking 60% plus, except me of course, I'm a complete nutter nab. They tend to be very good players, well above the average, and as such, not everybody is going to be able to play the tanks that they play in the same manner as what they see on the screen. I mean, I'm a fully qualified and experienced lawyer, and I could do a video on how to do effective advocacy, but that wouldn't for one instant give you the required skills, knowledge, or technical know-how to then go out after watching it and conduct a murder trial. Man's got to know his limitations. We then have the players themselves, who must also take some of the responsibility here. Although, if you give people the tools to overreach, then they will certainly take those tools. I mean, Wargaming told us that 5.5 was implemented because new players were not hanging around the game as long because of so-called seal clubbing. So in order to address that imbalance, Wargaming initially introduced a newbie MM. Well, it appears, at least on the face of it, that this MM is now gone, except for the bots for the first 100 battles, because I am seeing players with a lot less than 5,000 battles in tier 10. So if new players don't like being smacked in the lower tiers, what difference does it now make being smacked in the upper tiers? A good question for another time. So let's explore further the actual problem with low battle experience players in the upper tiers. Well, it's actually a massive issue. The game itself is designed around a tier structure for a reason. 
whereby the tanks get progressively more powerful, but at the same time, progressively harder to play. As you progress through the tiers, you get to learn you know, crucial skills such as side scraping, going all down, rotating around the maps, the maps themselves, how to handle your tank, how to use certain ammunition correctly and effectively, and more importantly, how teams and tanks actually work. In the low tiers when you first start out, what happens is one of two things. Either you YOLO into the other side and a brawl ensues until you're dead, or you camp at the back all tentative and waiting for the other side to make a move. These tactics work in the low tiers to an extent, because the vast majority of you are in the same boat, inexperienced with little to no understanding either the maps, the tactics, or the actual ability of the tanks. When, however, you get to the tier X part of the game, this changes massively. First of all, you are more likely to come across those players who are not only extremely good, but also they are pros. These players know exactly what they're doing. They know the tanks, they know the maps, they know how to use ammunition correctly, and they will smack you into oblivion. They will generally leave you behind, and even those of us with a lot of experience struggle to counter these types of players. So those of you with zero experience have absolutely no chance against them whatsoever. <laughs> Crazy. The other important factor is that when you move into the higher tiers, teamwork and more importantly, the actual task of doing the role that the tank is assigned to do becomes ever more important and critical. The experienced players rely upon certain things to an extent happening and it is assumed that players do the roles that their tanks are meant to do. For example, if you're in a light tank, you're meant to spot. So if, for, in another example, if you're in a super heavy like say an E100 or a VK72, it is not expected that you will sit in the spawn and snipe. There is an expectation that tanks like the super heavies will use its armor effectively and at least be in the battle. <laughs> this failure to do the right role in the tank is something that I am seeing more and more and in my honest opinion this is ruining the overall experience of the entire player base. I mean, look, no one likes rolling out in top tiers to be totally and completely let down by the lack of knowledge and understanding of the team around them. Believe me, it will piss those players off and it leads to greater toxicity and anger because these are normal human traits when you're faced with what could only be called total and utter incompetence of the players around you. Now, I'm not talking about win rate here. I'm talking about battle experience or lack of. Look, if I see a player with 300 battles rolling out on a Leo 1 with say a 40% win rate, then believe me, that player is not ready to play that tank and cannot play that tank. Hear you nothing that I say. And whilst they may have a decent game, this will be the exception, not the norm. And that should be self-evident, but clearly it is not. It can't be fun to consistently lose, which is the inevitable. Not for you, not for the players around you, and certainly not for those players who have worked hard to get into those tiers and to have no team around you. Trust me, it will lead to bigger, greater, and more toxicity. And it does. Of course. So what in real terms can be done about this? Well, obviously Wargaming needs to take the lead on this. And whilst 5.5 won't be reversed... No! No, 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 no! No! No, 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 no! They need to offer some mechanism that offers some restriction to inexperienced players from rushing into a tank that they're clearly not ready to play. That's going to be tricky for Wargaming, if I'm being honest. Because it could impact their business if they restrict it. I mean, there's no point shutting the stable door once the horse is bolted. Nevertheless, they need to implement something that does restrict players going forward. At least that'll be a start, hey? Maybe. Maybe not. 
Also, YouTubers, if they really care about the actual game itself, also need to educate more effectively and not just concentrate on those big damage games getting great win rates and showing higher tier tanks. Again, that's also tricky because the bigger YouTubers rely on the views to gain revenue and they are therefore aiming to give what the audience wants, not necessarily what it needs. And as all, and I mean all, every single YouTuber out there is totally independent, they cannot nor should they be dictated to on what content they must do. But the players themselves also need to be responsible, but that message is about as effective as flogging a dead donkey. You can do it all day, but nothing will ever happen. So the only real party that can do anything meaningful about this is wargaming themselves. Now, I have heard through the grapevine they are considering doing something that may address this situation. Alas, only time would tell. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been a little take on where I think the current state of the game is and what realistically needs to be done. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, remember guys, it's just a game. So stay safe, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.